Hello, I put this bit at the beginning to explain what this is for people who watch content that I make. Skip at this time code if you don't care and you just want to get to the video. Now, as you might have guessed by the thumbnail, this video is not mine. It is created by somebody named Cinematic Venom, who you may know for his infamous Lord of the Rings review. Now, a while ago, I, I say a while ago, uh, I think he's, I think it was in February, he released a video saying that he was going to delete his entire channel. I don't remember what the exact reasons were for him doing this, but I think it's explained in his documentary, which I will provide a link for. But in short, he deleted all of his videos, but he released one video saying that he made every single video that he ever made public for 24 hours so that we could download and repost them. So he gave everybody permission to download a video before he deleted it and repost it. Now, the reason I downloaded this wasn't actually because of that. I downloaded this long before or he, he uploaded that video and deleted most of his Cinematic Venom reviews because I was originally going to make a response to this video which is a review of Raiders of the Lost Ark. But because he deleted most of his videos and his entire channel and basically went off of the inter went off of the internet, it kind of feels weird to make a response to it now. I mean, yeah, I made a response to Unknown Flix's video. You know, and he deleted that, but uh, this is different because this guy's entire channel is gone. So it feels weirder to make a response video to somebody who's probably not uh, going to do much with it because I don't even think he does YouTube videos anymore. But keep in mind, that doesn't mean I'll never make a response to this. It just means that don't expect to see one anytime soon. Another thing with this video is that, that I will have some edits, and by edits I mean I'll probably block some stuff for copyright. Only if the video itself gets blocked because of it. So if you see any copyright shields, that's what it's for. And there won't be an end screen for this video because you don't really need one for this. Like, I'm not going to promote my content on this guy's thing. So yeah, that's all of the context. Enjoy Cinematics Review. Enjoy Cinematic Venom's review of Lord of the Rings. Er, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Do you know what I love about my audience? I can come on here and shit over any movie I like. Doesn't matter how loved it is. Ben-Hur, Lord of the Rings, Mad Max, and yet they will always, always stick by me no matter what. That being said... Don't look at it. Shut your eyes, Murray, and don't look at it no matter what happens. Hey, he's talking about the movie! My name is Tamara Chambers, and this is Cinematic Venom. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark is the story of Indiana Jones and some Raiders for the Lost Ark. What, you need more? Alright. <laughs> Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford, is an archaeologist who enters the temple in Peru to try to capture some golden artifacts amidst some booby traps set by Kevin McAllister's grandfather but is then outnumbered and loses it in the process. He's also a nerdy professor who learns that Nazis... Yes! Nazis are in this! Odd. What do I want to see them for? ...are looking for his mentor to try to find more artifacts, and specifically the titular Ark, making them more invincible. Oh, so that's how the Nazis almost won the Second World War, a magical Ark! This is an educational film. Trust me. So Jones sets off to try to find this Ark, joining forces with his mentor's daughter Marion, who he ends up porking. They have a very on-again, off-again relationship, she blows up. And I am totally sure that she's dead and won't return at any part of the entire film. Marion's dead. Yes, I know. Yeah, I'm completely convinced. 
Oh, look, what a shock. The Ark is located. The evil guys want to present it to Hitler until Jones saves the day and melts them. Just like how the Second World War ended in real life. Educational. Just rumors, really. It was in 1973 when George Lucas wrote up The Adventures of Indiana Smith, and much like Star Wars, he wanted to update some film serials of the 30s and 40s. He worked with Philip Kaufman, who helped him come up with the story arc of the story's arc. Come on, point for that one. Possibly. Lucas temporarily shelved it to work on Star Wars instead, and whilst holidaying in Hawaii in 1977, his good friend Steven Spielberg was also there. While Spielberg built a sandcastle, because of course he did, he expressed an interest in directing a James Bond movie, but Lucas claimed that he had created a character much better than Bond and pitched his story. Spielberg loved it and called it a James Bond film without the hardware. I call it a James Bond film without the corners. No time to argue. Spielberg did, however, hate the name Smith, to which Lucas then changed it to Jones. Steven was a bit reluctant to sign on for the project, though, as Lucas wanted him for an entire trilogy, and his friend did not want to work on two more scripts, but Lucas had already gotten them written, so Spielberg agreed. Unfortunately, Lucas was actually lying, and when it came to produce the sequel, he had nothing written. George Lucas misleading people? <laughs> Never! My feeling exactly. Spielberg and Lucas did disagree a lot though. The latter wanted him as a James Bond-esque playboy, while Lucas felt he should stay just as an academic adventurer. Spielberg even wanted him to be an alcoholic, but we'll save that for pirates instead. What do you mean? Originally, the script was rejected by every major studio as they wanted $20 million to fund it, and Paramount eventually agreed. Lawrence Kasdan's fifth draft screenplay was produced, and he and Lucas did their very best to try to make the production as cheap as possible, doing only about three or four takes each, most effects being puppets, models, or tricks with the camera. Filming began on June the 23rd, 1980, and spanned until September that year. An amazing musical score by legend John Williams was composed, and Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark was released on June the 12th, 1981, grossing a worldwide total of 384 million dollars against a budget of just 18 million. Why, are you willing to offer more? The movie was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, but only walked away with Best Sound, Best Film Editing, Best Visual Effects, and Best Art and Set Direction. It also picked up a Grammy and Best Picture at the People's Choice Awards, with Spielberg also being nominated for a Golden Globe. It's one of the most deliriously funny, ingenious, and stylish American adventure movies ever made. Two things, however, make Raiders of the Lost Ark more than just a technological triumph. Its sense of humor and the droll style of its characters. We find ourselves laughing in surprise, in relief, in incredulity at the movie's ability to pile one incident upon another in an exhaustible series of inventions. It's the ultimate Saturday action matinee, a film so funny and exciting it can be enjoyed any day of the week. Um, can't any film be enjoyed any day of the week? Oh no! Can't like Terminator 2! It's Tuesday! They have not one brain among them. There's more excitement in the first 10 minutes of Raiders than any movie I've seen all year. By the time the explosive misadventures end, any moviegoer worth its salt ought to be exhausted. After the undeniable success, a prequel, Temple of Doom, was released, as well as two sequels, The Last Crusade... Not really last, though, is it? No. ...and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, with a third plan for 2020, the exact same year The Rock will dethrone Donald Trump as US President. A television series also spun off from this film, as well as numerous other books, comics, and video games. The American Film Institute listed it as the 60th best film in the first century of cinema, but in an updated list in 2007, it moved down to 66. He also called it the 10th most thrilling film, and Indiana Jones is the second greatest hero ever. Entertainment Weekly called him their third favorite action hero, and there was even a fan-made remake for some children. It took them seven years to make being filmed between 1982 and 1989, nearly a shot-for-shot -shot recreation, but Spielberg himself praised their hard work and said that he would love to see the names on the big screen one day. The thing is, it was actually shelved and pretty much forgotten about until director Eli Roth discovered it in 2003. If you want to check it out, it's called Raiders of the Lost Ark, the adaptation. Channel 4 selected the original as the 20th best family film, and Empire even listed it as the second greatest movie in history, only losing to The Godfather. Oh, I can think of plenty of movies that it would lose to. Like, almost any. Oh, he's being generous. Right, let's see what I do like. The musical score is fantastic because it's John Williams and he can pretty much fart on a keyboard and compose perfection. A lot of the sets and cinematography are really nice. This shot of Harrison Ford with the lightning behind him is amazing. And that's it. That, that's all I've got. I mean, a lot of people love this movie and this whole franchise and that's great. But personally, I just don't get why. Are you absolutely sure? Firstly, this iconic character. This legendary man who's built up and hyped as this badass. This incredible hero who Harrison Ford took great pride in. He wanted Han Solo to die because he was embarrassed of that role. But this, this is his holy grail. This legendary role. Indiana Jones sucks. A lot. Your persistence surprises even me. Dear God, I don't get it. I just don't get it. First of all, a whip? 
A fucking whip is his weapon of choice. I'm sorry, but that is easily the least badass weapon in film history. When you're this legendary action star and you're prancing around using Catwoman's fucking shtick, you've got a serious problem. Anytime he shows up using this to try to scare his enemies, I'm in hysterics. How can anyone take this seriously? Oh, I'm gonna get ya. Oh, be afraid. Oh, don't wanna mess with me. Oh yeah. You bad guys are in for a world of pain. Yeah, I'm a badass. Mind out, James Bond. Yeah, got me rope, my hat, my whip, and just when you least expect it, I'll bite ya. Oh, okay, that's it for the day then. And secondly, he just gets treated like a bitch for the entire movie. Within the first 10 minutes, after he's done prancing around with his sissy rope, he gets completely owned and tricked by a complete doofus side character who, by the way, is even taller than Indiana, so it makes him look even more of a pussy. The idea was to create a character who isn't exactly a Terminator, more of an underdog who struggles, but overcomes the odds in the end and comes out on top. The problem is, when he does begin the comeback, it looks terrible. He fights people who look much more intimidating than him, so I'm rooting for the bad guys half the time. These four White scenes are atrocious. When he's not using his bitch whip, he punches like a 12 year old who's never even been in a scrap. Oh, come at me. Yeah, don't want to mess with me. <laughs> oh, God. And then he dodges moves like a constipated spaz. Whoa. Matrix. Whoa. I'm a badass. I'm a bad. And he even bites people. This big, badass, iconic character, he has to bite them. He fights like a 12-year-old girl. Does he have to pull their hair and poke them in the fucking eyes as well? <laughs> Ooh, get away from me. I mean, here, he is a badass for a slight few seconds, but then... <laughs> of course. And he isn't even the one who kills him. He dies via propeller by chance. Nice one, you wimp. He gets owned by a woman. He can't fight. He has a sissy weapon. He's such a baby. Marian. See, even she knows. And to top it all off, he has his girl fucking kiss his injuries. Seriously? One of the most iconic badass characters of all time. And he's got his girlfriend kissing his fucking boo-boos. Hey, babe, how's your day? Not good. I went to war. Oh my god, are you okay? No. What happened? I got injured, and I need you to kiss my boo-boo. Kiss your what? I hurt my elbow. Kiss my boo-boo and make me feel better. Do you know what? You've asked some dumb shit in your time, but that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm hurt. Grow a pair. You need to seriously man up and provide. My injuries are just a joke to you. I also hurt my eyebrow. Kiss my goddamn boo-boo. No, no, that's it. I'm out. Where's my whip? Then after getting her horny, he ditches her. There's also many opportunities for an epic badass one-liner, but instead we get... Ah! Let her go. Really? Jones? Jones? I'm gonna blow up the air grenade. This guy sucks! Someone give him back his lightsaber. That time is past. There is a cool fight scene on the front of this truck. Until he slips like a pussy. It looks ridiculous and so silly. I'm gonna get you, you- Whoopsie! Silly me, I slipped. Such a big silly goose. Here, he's hiding and he looks like such a bitch, but the bigger issue is, how the hell does nobody spot him? The bad guys aren't interesting and they are not subtle whatsoever. As soon as you see this dude, his very first scene, you can immediately tell he's the villain. Just look at him and listen to his voice. We are not thirsty. What do you want? The same thing your friend Dr. Jones wanted. You don't see it, do you? He's a villain. The characters are just so dull, including Indiana. We know hardly anything about him, but that can still work if the character is badass enough. But my left knee is more gangster. Seriously, it's got a scar, smokes a pipe and everything. Next time, Indiana Jones, it'll take more than children to save you. Odd villain line. There's just nothing to these antagonists here. He looks a joke. He looks uninteresting. He doesn't look at all like he's a threat to the hero one bit. What shall we talk about? How to make an entertaining movie, perhaps? 
But the problem is, the entire movie is one of the most boring, dull, uninteresting snore fests I have ever had to sit through. It is such a chore. This is literally digging the movie. It should be called Indiana Jones and the Digging Escapade. They bicker over whether or not they're digging in the right location, and I just find it extremely difficult to give a shit. said their headpiece only had markings on one side. Are you absolutely sure? Belloc's staff is too long. They're, They're digging, digging in, in the, the wrong, wrong place. place. <laughs> I am the monarch of the sea. I am the ruler of the... Co Exciting action film here. In the sequel, they talk about the circumference of a shovel. They preach about religion because, of course, it does. It's an arc. It's, uh, it's a cap with an elaborate headpiece it, in the shape of the sun with a crystal in the center. And what you did was skewed into this tangent, creating an alternate 1985. Oh, Marcus, what are you trying to do? Scare me? You sound like my mother. We've known each other for a long time. I don't believe in magic, a lot of superstitious hocus pocus. Yeah, you believe in God, Jesus, Noah, and a magical arc that somehow fit two of each animal. Almost regretted. The film also has a huge fetish for over-the-top, unconvincing screams from terrible actors. <laughs> what else do we have? How about forced illogical dialogue? There's a big snake in the plane, Jock! Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! I hate snakes, Jock! I hate them! Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? Was that supposed to be funny? I, I don't get it! What was the point of the line? It was random, unnecessary, unfunny, made no sense. It's gonna show up later, isn't it? Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Snakes? Snakes, snakes. I don't know no snakes. Because it's the only way to make that line from earlier actually have a point and not seem forced, random, unfunny, and completely unnecessary. Oh, well, wait a minute, it still is. Oh, and sorry, but I just have to. Why did it have to be snakes? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? There's a part where he saves Marion, but then he realises if he lets her go, the bad guys will scout the entire area and find them both, so therefore he has to leave her there for their own good. Now, this is actually quite well written and a really intelligent moment from the character. The problem is, Harrison Ford doesn't at any point act like he's reluctant to do this. Not once does he act like he genuinely does not want to leave her there. He just acts like he's just using it as an excuse to ditch her. You gotta get me out of here! Come on, Charles, are you crazy? No, oh, I hate to do this. <laughs> sit still. Soz, um, I have to. Uh, otherwise they'll find us. Yeah, yeah, that's it, they'll find us. Yeah, Tote's to 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 gotta leave. Uh, my bad, see ya. Yeah, who's all you wanted? No food, no water. Don't talk with your mouth full. That's just rude. Table manners are important. Why, Dr. Jones, whatever are you doing in such a nasty place? Why don't you come on down here? I'll show you. Thank you, my friend, but I think we are all very comfortable up here. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> yes, we are very comfortable up here. It was so funny, creative, and intelligent, I just had to say it twice. Look at this, our hero is trapped in a pit with his biggest fear, and I'm bored senseless and couldn't give two wanks. Wave it at anything that slithers. <laughs> oh, thank God, this whole place is slithering. Don't be silly, it's obviously Hufflepuff. Hell, people are flying off of cliffs and I'm bored out of my mind. The big famous ending has really nice effects, but I just don't care. After an hour and 47 minutes of failing to get me invested, this all just falls flat with me. And then the film just suddenly stops. I mean, yeah, he saves the day, but then the film keeps going and then it suddenly realizes, shit, we need an ending. 
Nah, fuck it. Hit the credit button. Yeah, we're good. Not that I'm complaining. I'm just grateful that it's over. The film just doesn't do it for me. If you like it, by all means, like it. I'm glad you do, but I found it unbearably boring with pathetic characters that look ridiculous most of the time, bad acting, and a very dull premise. I'm not quite sure how you can make Han Solo fighting Nazis boring, but hey, when Harrison Ford and George Lucas are involved, anything's possible.